So first of all, the president said that he misspoke when he talked about uh, whether or not he thought Russia would have been involved in meddling. He said, I meant to say that they would have been, not that they wouldn't have been. How did that register with you? Do you think that that washes? Well, I thought I have thought all along that because we've conflated two sort of different things in the Mueller investigation, that the president's reaction is typically because he sees the Mueller investigation as an accusation of collusion that somehow the president colluded with the Russians. And there's another aspect of the investigation that has to do with who hacked into uh, Hillary Clinton's emails and who released those to the public. And so I think those are two sort of completely different aspects, but they're in the same investigation. So I think his instinct is to push back and say, you know, there was no collusion. I was never involved with Russia, which I believe to be true. And I think there has been a partisan witch hunt to go after him to try to say somehow there was collusion with Russia. But that is separate from whether or not Russia actually hacked into Hillary Clinton's emails, which I think he accepts and I think was somewhat muddled in the initial comments from the press conference. But I think he's made more clear today. All right. John Brennan, as you know, uh, came out and said that the president's performance was treasonous in his opinion. Here is the president responding to John Brennan in an interview that will air later tonight with Tucker Carlson. Watch. I think Brennan's a very bad guy, and if you look at it, a lot of things happened under his watch. I think he's a very bad person. Your thoughts on that, Senator? You know, I agree completely. I think John Brennan's completely unhinged, and you see him now calling the president treasonous. And what should worry every American is John Brennan was in charge of the CIA, the most powerful intelligence gathering you know, group on the planet. They can absorb every bit of information you can imagine, your phone calls, your metadata, your bank records, your visa records. They could destroy any person's life. The person at the head of that turns out to be a very much a partisan, a Trump hater, and very much a uh, just someone who is, uh, you know, a Trump hater. I guess that's the best way to put it. But, uh, you know, I really am worried that he was head of the CIA for so long, harboring all of that bias. Well, well, let me ask you this, because you're concerned about all of that, and I know you are, um, that is one of the big concerns as we move forward, because Dan Coats has said that he believes that the attempt to meddle in the, in the midterm elections is probably more intense than it was during the presidential election. So it almost feels like perhaps rather than, you know, kind of revisiting and rehashing what happened over the last 24 hours, we need to make sure that our cybersecurity is stronger. That feels like something that the president could really be coming out very strongly on that might go more to right. actual policy and fixing things than fixing, you know, a weak the, performance in Helsinki. This, the, this has been exactly my point. The integrity of the election is the most important thing. And what we should do is learn that countries do hack into elections and try. This isn't the first time. I mean, yeah. Dove Levine studied this from Carnegie Mellon University and said that the USA hacked or tried to get involved with 80 different elections over the last 50 years. The Soviet Union has, China does. And so the rule that we should learn or the moral we should learn from this is we need to protect our elections. And there are a lot of things we could discuss, but people are so intent about making this about their hatred, yeah. their Trump derangement syndrome, that we aren't talking about really what we should do. Very and I've true. had some things like we should decentralize the elections. They are already decentralized. We should ensure that they remain decentralized, that there is a paper trail for every precinct, that there is a Republican and a Democrat judge, there's some supposed to be that signs off on the precinct returns and if the vote was a thousand to eight hundred by the time that gets into a computer system someone could always call back and say yeah. what was the vote you signed off on and do you have a piece of paper to verify yeah. that vote yeah, I, I think that's a, the biggest point I also want to just bring up one more thing because there you know to that end if the FBI is so concerned as they should be with figuring out meddling in United States elections you would think that they would have wanted to get their hands on the actual DNC server here is the experience because there's a lot said about this because the president brought it up the other day um, and it was kind of poo-pooed by a Democrat who I had on last night who said it didn't matter that they didn't actually have the server. But watch this moment between Congressman Will Hurd and James Comey. So, Director, um, FBI notified the DNC um, um, f early before any information was put on WikiLeaks and when um, the, you have still been never been given access to any of the technical or the physical uh, machines that were that were that were hacked by the Russians. That's correct. Although we got the forensics from the pros that they hired, which uh, 
Again, you know, best uh, practice is always to get access to the machines themselves, but this, my folks tell me, was a appropriate substitute. So, what do you say to that? Well, you're taking the word of someone else who's investigated it. No, I would think the police would only take the word of themselves when they actually investigate and looked at the servers. So I don't think there's any excuse for them not having done their job better. And the thing is, is a lot of this stuff's more complicated than people would think. When you're trying to trace who actually hacked into it, because there are people who can actually put the... Uh, the type of a fingerprint on what they're doing to make themselves look like someone else. They can make them, uh, by going through several different servers, obscure where they're actually coming from. And so I don't think it's always as black and white when we say so-and-so did this hacking or didn't. And I think it would be very important that the FBI should have looked directly at the Democrat servers. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I can see people being concerned about some of what they saw yesterday. But boy, if this happens again, um, and you point out North Korea, China, there's a lot of bad actors out there, that would be real genuine an embarrassment uh, that the United States should be very concerned about. Senator Paul, thank you, sir. Always good to have thank you with you. us.